Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to, as what you can see above me, the 13th wander of the Worldwide Wander. I've been thinking, Kyle, and by the way, I'm David. Hi, I'm David Pearl. And I've been thinking, whose idea was this? Why are we, why are we up all night? <laughs> and then my wife said, you've got no one to blame but yourself. <laughs> I, I swear this wasn't my idea, but I, people seem to be blaming for, I think it was a combination of our, both of our ideas, to be honest, but perhaps, perhaps, but um, we'll have to, we'll have to do an email search for the number 24 and see where this all originated because I'm convinced it was you, David, firmly, but it has been a dream of mine for a long time. So we're happy to welcome you all. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, the sun is rising in Europe. We've been watching it rise behind Philip in Berlin and behind Anne in Paris. And um, it's amazing. And it's already come up in Cluj as well, we can see in Romania. So thank you all so much for being here. Uh, this is the Worldwide Wander. And we've got a few, maybe I won't start with logistics. Maybe I'll just start with the lightheartedness. That thank you all so much for waking up with us. It's so good to see you. Um, you know, there's going to be bits coming up where we're going to ask you to put some shoes on and head outside uh, if you're able and comfortable uh, and show us your view of the world. You're more than welcome to enjoy the experience wandering around your house. If you're within earshot of your computer, that's plenty. Uh, but we want to see we want to see the streets. We want to see the world around you. Um, but David, what else is important to share? Well, we'd love to. Hi, everybody. It's David Pearl here in London. I'd lo we'd love to know where you are. So if there's some way you could either pop that in the chat or maybe even better, just change your name uh, in, in Zoom. You could even change your name, right? You could just call yourself whatever you would like to be, uh, be called or have been called if your parents had asked their opinion, your opinion when you were born. But it's interesting for us to know where you're calling in from, because this is a this is a global venture and it gives us enormous pleasure to see the the different points of the compass joining up. So please, if you could just take a moment, if you don't know how to change your name on Zoom, you just press on those three little dots, you know, put the cursor on your picture and place Marco from Munich. It rhymes. Well, it, 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 it's, it's alliteration anyway. That's fantastic. So great to see you here. Um, and also to welcome our audience on YouTube. We're being watched by, I am told, billions on YouTube. Well, more or less. Uh, there, are, there are friends watching in on YouTube. Hi, Katerina. Lovely to see you. Um, and we're recording this call. Uh, we've been where we're, we wanted to experiment in having a 24 hour zoom call. And so we're recording it for posterity, but also because there's a wonderful ideas that your colleagues and fellow members of the community have come up with so far about how to be living and working and thinking and dreaming and eating and laughing better. Um, and we'd love to uh, harvest them and archive them. And that really is part of why we're, we're doing this, this worldwide wonder. It is the brainchild of, uh, I mean, I think I had the idea, but didn't, hadn't found anybody eccentric enough to say yes to it uh, until we met Creative Mornings. So Street Wisdom and Creative Mornings are collaborating on this. You'll hear more about both organizations, but just to say maybe that we both revere and love creativity. We see it as uh, uh, our birthright and um, we see it very much linked to kind of love and generosity and also at a time when I don't know about you but you look around the world and I'm often thinking inside hey we're better than this <laughs> in so many ways I think that's a very common feeling that that that, that, that I that, that we sense around the world and um, at the times like this it's easy for creative people to drift into you know, commentary and critique. I know I spend some time on social media critiquing what's going on and commenting, but I think it's a time when we, we perhaps we should all be exercising imaginations, our imaginations. And I think the reason for that is, you know, if we can imagine better futures, there's absolutely no guarantee they'll happen. But if we don't imagine them, there is an absolute guarantee they won't. So I think that's kind of, we've got this feeling the cavalry isn't coming. It's up to us to to be thinking about better ways individually and collectively of, of being on this planet at this time. Kyle. Amazing. That's such a great intro. Thank you so much, David. Um, 
we're 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 lucky to to work with uh, Street Wisdom on this because there's there's no better pairing really, and such a complementary skill. And so everyone who's come from both communities who's who's been able to join us on these wanders, uh, we, you know, well over a thousand people at this point in the last and over the past dozen of plus events um, has has just been in awe of, of this experience. So we're glad you're here to partake in it with us. It's really special. There's nobody else we would probably consider doing this with. So we're lucky to have the Street Wisdom team. Um, before we dive in, I want there's there's a lot of us. So I've got a couple of logistics for cameras. Um, if you're uh, you know if you're going to step out uh, step outside, we'd love to see your camera view um, from your point of view. So not in selfie mode. Um, and uh, we'd love to see your we'd love to see everyone's cameras on now just to say hello and see everyone's faces and while we all get warmed up and meet and greet each other. But of course, you know if you can't turn your camera on, that's great. When we start our quests, we'll ask you to turn your camera on if you're outside uh, or even wandering in your home, um, perhaps seeing, seeing something interesting. But if you're just sitting here enjoying the experience, we ask you to turn your cameras off when the quests begin um, and we'll, get, we'll send us some reminders. So that's the logistics out of the way. But uh, David, should we introduce our special guest today? Yeah, uh, I'd love yeah. to do that. Jim is, a, Jim is a, a dear friend of mine. And we basically asked, this is a marathon. We're on a marathon and we asked friends of ours around the world, inspiring people to give us these little bursts of energy and stimulus, a little bit like I, I don't do marathon running, but you see people giving so like energy gels and so on. So the man I want to, want to introduce you to is, is a mentor and friend and somebody that fills my heart and mind whenever I hear him speak. And I think he'll do the same for you. His name's Jim Garrison. He's a he's a double PhD uh, in theology and philosophy. He's the Dean of the Ubiquity University. He's the head of the State of the World Forum. He's a friend and confidant of my, uh, Mikhail Gorbachev. I think he was instrumental in getting Gorbachev and Reagan to sit down and talk. He's a wonderful, humble man, but um, he's connected. I feel when he talks, it's, he's connected, you know, very grounded, but also extremely con connects to other worlds and other spirits. So I asked him to give us a, uh, a, a some stimulus to think about as we're walking, um, and he didn't disappoint. So let's 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 look at the the tape of um, Jim's message. Cue it up. Hello, uh, David, and all our friends at uh, Worldwide Wander. This is Jim Garrison. I'm the president of Ubiquity University. I've known David for many, many years as a fountainhead of creativity. Uh, so whatever I would say in that regard uh, would be very modest and humble. Uh, but I want to just greet all of you in the spirit of humanity rising during this time of unprecedented global ecological duress uh, to say that available to all of us in our deepening crisis are equally powerful opportunities in which our creativity and our imaginations can blossom and flourish as never before. And I think for me, there are three ingredients uh, to creativity. Uh, one is an insatiable curiosity with difference. You know, most of us, when we encounter difference, we either become concerned, afraid, or alienated in some way. And I've learned over my life to embrace difference uh, with a curiosity. How can I learn from the difference uh, before me? And that has always served me in good stead. Uh, secondly, I would say that out of the appreciation of differences, because of curiosity, one then naturally looks for connections. If you look at difference from the point of view of isolation or superiority, you become alienated. If you look at difference and diversity from the point of view of curiosity, you look for connections. And it is out of the connections observed and experienced out of diversity that creativity arises. And then thirdly, I would say uh, that uh, for me, uh, what binds it all together and makes creativity real is compassion and a deep love of our fellow human beings 
a deep love for the larger ecosystem and the fact that as we bond together through our diversity, we are actually creating new neural networks of wonderment. So as you wander the world uh, on this day, be curious, look for connections, and love one another. Oh my God. <laughs> How can you not love Jim? He is Yoda. Um, don't you love that idea? Neural networks of wonderment. I literally have tears in my eyes. He describes so well, I think, what we're doing here, this idea of you know, curiosity, connection, creativity. And man, uh, uh, thank you, Jim. Thank you, wherever you are. Thank you for you know, adding that layer of meaning to what we're doing, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's precious. Um, oh, I'm quite moved by that. I really I'm quite moved. Um, and Paco liked it in Barcelona as well, which is great. Oh, man. Uh, Kyle, uh, let, let me hand back to you while I kind of uh, reconstitute <laughs> myself. That was, that was such a gift to, to guide us at this hour. So that's pretty, that's pretty special. Thanks for, thanks for that, David. Um, my name is my name is Kyle Baptista. I'm the Chief Community Officer at Creative Warnings HQ. Uh, I'm based in Toronto, where you know the sun rose uh, 19 hours ago, and now I've been chasing the sunrises across the world since then. Uh, but don't worry, the sunrise the sun will be rising here again soon, so I can't wait for that. Uh, and I'm really excited to have so many of you joining us here today. Um, I'm here to represent our. Creative Warnings chapters across you know, Sub-Saharan parts of Sub-Saharan Africa, South Africa, parts of the Middle East, um, Western Europe. You're all uh, here to enjoy sunrise and a walk with each other. Um, and we're so lucky to have you. So thanks for coming. Um, you can see a full list of all the cities participating as we've carried on throughout the past. Um, I, I gotta stop trying to count the hours, but we've got we've got four of these walks left. So thank you for making time to join us. If you really enjoy the experience, you're more than welcome to stay on and stay with us. Um, I'm here to tell you a bit about what Creative Mornings is in case it's new to you. So Creative Mornings, um, let me describe it like this. Every month, and usually the last Friday of the month, in over 200 cities around the world, a crew of volunteers, um, hundreds of volunteers wake up early, they head to a venue, they start setting up chairs um, for, a, for a monthly talk. And these volunteers work tirelessly in their cities to organize speakers, volunteers, coffee, breakfast, AV partners, you name it. Um, every aspect you need for a great grassroots community event. Most importantly, these events, much like the event we're all on right now, are always free and free forever. Uh, we're the world's largest creative in, in, in person creative community uh, built on the back of an engine of generosity, which is Carried, been carried through the last day with all of us here. Um, in some cities, you'll have an opportunity to pitch the entire room, a passion project or a job opportunity. You'll hear a live musician, you'll meet fellow collaborators. The most important thing of all though, is that you'll be amongst a, a group of diverse creative talent from your own city. Um, and if you travel, I hope that you'll make Creative Mornings part of your travel itinerary. Uh, you can find events in over 200 cities across 70 countries around the world. Um, and just a couple of, a couple of quick snaps from chapters um, to organize events in the time zone. Of, time zones we're traveling in today. We have a group gathered in Amsterdam. I love these group shots, the kind of establishing shots that show all of these beautiful, airy venues in Western Europe. I don't know where all this natural light comes from, but I'm very jealous. Um, sorry, the second photo is taken of Barcelona, uh, and here we have our chapter in Budapest. Um, but you know, that's that's enough about Creative Mornings. I, I'm very excited to introduce the volunteer host of our Cluj Romanian chapter, Stefania, who's going to come up and join me in a second. Uh, but if you, know, if you want to get involved in Creative Warnings, you go to the website, you don't see a chapter in your city, what you can do is scroll to the very bottom, click start a chapter, and that's how you can bring Creative Warnings uh, to your town or city. So with that being said, Stefania, good morning. Oh, I forgot good morning. To, I forgot to show the slide of your beautiful face, but hello, we can see you. <laughs> Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you, yeah, loud and clear. It's great. Excellent. So, and I want to say Buna Dimineza. Oh, wow. Oh, from the beautiful, beautiful Buna Dimineza from Transylvania, Romania, in Cluj. 
I'm so happy to be able to have finally a sunny day to share this uh, piece of my city with you. Amazing. That's so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for climbing that hill and taking this to a beautiful vantage point. It's incredible. <laughs> That's really appreciated. Okay, so Stefania, tell me how you got involved in Creative Mornings. Uh, I actually started the chapter in, in Cluj. Um, I found out from a former colleague uh, from a former workplace where, uh, and uh, they encouraged me, yeah, you should apply. Um, I gather my courage. <laughs> and after a wonderful talk with you guys, we managed to open the chapter in uh, uh, the, actually the third chapter in Romania. And when was your first event? How long ago was that? It was in December 2017. So this December will be five years old. Mm, amazing. Uh, tell, me, tell me what a typical Creative Mornings event is like in Cluj. Well, uh, it's very similar to the rest of the Creative Morning events. You know, sleepy faces coming uh, to a beautiful venue where we wait for them with coffee and breakfast and uh, great music and energy. Uh, and after an inspiring talk, uh, it's that beautiful moment when the sleepy first faces convert into smiley faces and people go back and continue their day with inspiration and energy. Amazing. And, you know, with, with speakers um, being the main part of the event, do you have a speaker that kind of stands out to you as a favorite over the years? It's so hard to choose, actually. <laughs> Um, but I think the, the one that had the most interesting uh, uh, interaction with the audience, uh, uh, there was a graffiti artist, uh, Kero Zen from Cluj, and the, um, the theme, the global theme was chaos. Mm -hmm. uh, so in order to deep, uh, go into a deeper meaning of chaos, he challenged me to find two by two meters canvases and blank canvases and put them between the audiences. And then he would just throw a lot of creative materials towards them and they just went wild on the canvases. So they created their own chaoses to create a common chaos. I still have those canvases. They're like a treasure. Um, but yeah, that, that was one of the most, uh, beautiful moments. I love that. What a great I mean, literal interpretation of the theme. That's great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Creatively chaos. Last, last question for you, Stefania is, do you have a question you're going to be pondering while you wander today? Oh yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I think the, uh, the hardest is the hardest question. And it's a question if, as the wise man from The Clash, the band said, should I stay or should I go? So uh, yeah, that's, that's the question. If should I still stay in Cluj? Oh, there's a beautiful dog, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, if should I stay or should I go? Or should I start a new chapter in my life? Maybe this chapter is over or not, so. Yeah, after the small talk, I will walk around a little bit around the city. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I also want, but yeah, we'll, we'll find out. It's a hard question, but it's a needed question. Absolutely. Oh, well, uh, Stefania, I wish you luck in, uh, in finding an answer to that question. And by the way, as a rule on Zoom, you can't say, oh, cute dog and not show the dog on Zoom. So that's a, that's a, it's a broken yeah. rule. It's okay. We're gonna let it slide. It's fine. It's okay. It, it was a cute. It was a cute labadoodle. <laughs> Thanks. The description helps. Thank you so much for taking time for waking up with us uh, and for wandering with us, Stefania. We appreciate you so much and everything you do for the Cluj creative community. Um, yeah. Have a have a great walk. It's so good to see you. Thank you, and also thank you for doing this incredible event. I'm looking forward to walk around the world with you guys. Amazing. We hope it's a gift for you. Thank you. <laughs> David, so, we're ready for the main, uh, main, main event here. Yeah, well, I feel like it's already begun with spirit animals coming and giving messages and so on and so forth. In a minute, I'm going to introduce you to Anne Dittmeyer, our colleague and uh, 
street wizard who's going to lead you through the experience. But perhaps I could just say a little bit about what lies ahead and a little bit just briefly about some context about what street wisdom is. So essentially, street wisdom comes out of it was a kind of like many things in life, it's something you just trip over in some ways. I wasn't expecting it to emerge, but I was working with um, uh, business executives, as I often do. And I noticed many years ago that if I if we went out of the building uh, where they were working, they seemed to be freed up as almost like they left their identity, their business identity back in the in the office. And it made me start thinking about the streets as a play space where it's a space between our identities. You know, buildings tend to define us. And it was like, well, we can be, we're out in public, we can be whoever we can be, it's the public realm. And, and um, the, also the idea was to keep it simple. Simple as in sense, just do, let's do the fundamentals. And it's taken years to get really, really simple. So what you're going to experience is deliberately super simple so that by the end of it, it's yours. It, you'll have you'll have embodied it and you'll you'll remember it it's it's uh, easy to do but hard to forget um it's in three uh, parts paco how many parts is it in i'm just checking paco can hear me how many parts three that's why you look at it see paco's like he's like that he's on it he got it three parts uh the first part uh which we're going to do in a minute is what we call the tune up I'm a musician by background, so I thought tune up. It's more really tune in. And the idea is, you know how we all screen out distraction and noise because we're going to get on with our stuff, right? Concentrate on what we're doing. We're going to do the opposite. We're going to open up our senses so that we can get more information, more information from the environment around us and really pick up the small details and, um, you know, dwell in, really be where we are, get present to where we are. Why? because that's like logging into the internet of inspiration that's all around us all the time. So we're screening out the noise, but also we're screening out the inspiration. And we want you to think of the environment around you as your creative partner going forward, not as a just a backdrop to your life, but your creative partner, more connected than we thought. And then in order to make use of the connection in the second part, Paco will remind you, you have three parts in this. The second part is what we call the quest and we call it that because we ask a question. And the reason we are walking with a question, one of your colleagues from the previous walk, just put it that simply, when you walk with a question, there's, you suddenly find meaning around you that was missing before. If put it another way, when you ask the question, you add a certain intentionality to this experience that awakens the world around you and you start to play. It's like a dance, yeah? And you'll get many answers possibly to the question that you ask. And will guide you to the question that you want, but uh, relax about that. Uh, you don't have to choose the right question. Just choose a question that's valuable for you right now. This is a technique. This is a practice that you've got for going forward. You can ask other questions and so on. And then in the final third part, as Paco will tell you, three parts, uh, we will gather again for what we call sharing, because in it we share what popped out at us. And what and how might it be an answer to our question? We just stress that how might it be an answer? Because one lovely thing here, and we're all creative, so we all understand that in a creative process, we're not using our rational linear mind. You know, A equals B. It's not that. It's we're we're we're, we're stepping into perhaps a little bit more dreamy space, a little bit more the, the world of the unconscious, where we're picking up singles, sim symbols, we're reading signs, we're connecting with with um, the world beyond what you see at the surface. And so what can be nice is you come out uh, with, a, with a sense of, of, of what the world's telling you, but not necessarily a one-to-one -one answer. And then you can dwell on that and dream into that. I think it was Arthur Kersler who said that creativity is one of those rare um, human experiences where the pupil and the teacher reside in the same human. So we've got a teacher in us and a pupil in us. And in some ways, what street wisdom does is it enables us to learn from our inner teacher. I think you'll find that that's, that's what's going on. Without any further ado, though, I'm going to hand you to Anne Dittmar. Anne is somebody, you know how there's something about the creative community. You meet other people and you've never met them before, but you feel like you've known them forever. Anne is such a person. She has her own practice based in Paris, her own practice. She's known online as Preta Voyager. I'm doing my best with my French accent. Um, 
but she's ready to ready to ready to voyage and she is genuinely one of life's flanners she's somebody that uh derives huge huge value from wandering as she and she'll exp, she'll explain that and also teaches us how to do that and how to map our futures there's a little bit what we're going to be doing with street wisdom but with any without any further ado i'm going to hand you to anne bonjour anne Bonjour, David. Bonjour, Kyle. Bonjour, everybody here this morning. Good morning, good evening, <laughs> wherever you are. Um, so happy to be here right now. And there's David's already given us such a great introduction to the street wisdom. So I think it is time that we should start digging and experiencing. And I love that there are already so many cameras on. And I am traveling the world with you all. So um, this group is already, we've got great energy going and, you know, collective imagination happening today. Um, so again, they're going to be three parts. Um, the tune up um, is going to be about 15 minutes and then I'll send you on a 15 minute quest and then we'll share. Um, so I just want to invite you to be open to whatever happens in this next hour. Um, and also let's just take a quick moment and pause and be grounded and thank our bodies for being here, you know, left foot, right foot on the ground, just, you know, taking a deep breath in and out and a moment of gratitude. And again, thank you all for being here. So quick note that there is no right or wrong way to do street wisdom today. And you can do this indoors or outdoors. If you want to start the tune up inside, you can. If you want to start it outside, you all look like an adventuresome group, but do what is right for you and what feels right for you. Um, and if you do want to turn your cameras on and let us see your world, um, we are happy to see that. So I will be guiding you. I will be the prompts. You do not need to watch the clock. Just listen for my voice. Um, and yes, let us get started. So there are going to be three parts to the tune up. And they are going to really help us tune into the world around us. Um, and so I'm going to give you some prompts. And so really let those prompts nourish you and guide you. And, you know, we're not getting stuck in our heads. We're not overanalyzing anything. We are seeing where our feet want to take us, following that curiosity that Jim talked about. Um, so I'm going to ask you after each quick tune up, if you want to share in the chat, just, you know, quickly let us know, but we're going to move pretty quickly through the tune up so that we can go on to our quest. And the quest is the part that we will bring a question to. So for the tune up, first tune up is I want you to be drawn to what attracts you and notice what doesn't. So really, what do you feel pulled to, you know, and what are you kind of turned away from? And I really want you to wander and embrace that child in you, your inner child, and like feel pulled to something. And maybe if you always take the same path or the same route every day, maybe today's the day that you spice things up. So look towards the things that you're drawn to um, and think about like what you feel as, as well, not just look, we're using more than our eyes today. So I'm going to set the clock for three minutes. I'll give you a one minute warning, but right now, three minutes, not overthinking anything. I just want you to pay attention and be drawn to what attracts you and notice what doesn't. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
probando, probando. We're gonna take about one more minute. Remember, we are paying attention to what attracts you and notice what doesn't. Just like you're a kid, pay attention to what you're physically drawn to, wander that way and notice what doesn't attract you. So I'll call you back in a minute. Okay, welcome back. Great job, everybody. Um, loving all the green spaces. Really need that in my morning. You are waking me up. Um, in the chat, real quick, if you want to share um, something that you were attracted to or drawn to, let us know. We're going to keep moving quickly through the tune up, but sometimes it's kind of fun to capture these memories or things that you observe and notice. But you all are doing wonderful. I really feel like, I'm not sure if you all are familiar with the term forest bathing, Japanese term, but so much green space. Love the therapeutic aspect of having nature. So I know it's a little bit harder sometimes on mobile to share. So we will keep moving. Nothing comes through. Okay, let's go ahead and keep on moving um, because we are here to wander today. So tune up number two. I want you to slow right down. So yes, slow everything down, the pace of walking, of moving, how you turn your head, how you blink your eyes the rate at which your mind thinks. Maybe you can even slow down the rate at which your hair grows. Um, but I think I need many of you to go even slower. I want this to be uncomfortable. If there are other people watching you right now, I don't want you to care what they think about you. In fact, I would love if they think you're crazy. <laughs> I want you to practice going slow and not worrying about the rest of the world around you but just pay attention to what happens when you slow right down. So we're gonna put another three minutes. I'll give you a two minute warning, but for three minutes, I want you to go as slow as you can go. Every aspect, slow.
Okay, we're gonna take one more minute going very slowly. Also, don't forget to look up, look around, still do that slowly. Sometimes we can get so fixated on the motion that we forget mm -hmm. to pay attention. So keep going slow, see if you can go even slower for this last minute. Okay, great job, everybody. You made it through tune-up number two. Um, really funny to see these cars zooming by, zooming by in David's view, but he's going really slow. So, you know, curious how that felt for you all. Was it comfortable to go that slow? You know, going slow is another way of working, another way of thinking, and we definitely live in a fast-paced world. So what happens when we do let ourselves slow down? Okay, getting ready for tune up three. We got this last three minute tune up before we head into our quest. So are you ready? Hopefully you are. Okay, tune up three. I want you to see the beauty in everything. And I mean everything, um, but it's not just seeing, it's also sensing the beauty in everything because it's a feeling, it's noticing, we're really using all of our senses today. So I want you to sense the beauty in everything. Um, and, you know, when you think beautiful, our minds go to the obvious things, but I want you to use these three minutes to think about some things that are not so obvious, um, but are also completely beautiful. Um, so, I want you to, in particular, look for things that aren't obviously beautiful. This could be, you know, some chewed gum on the sidewalk. Maybe if you look a little bit closer, you know, you might see a face. There's some beautiful work of art. You don't know unless you look. Um, or maybe there's a pile of cables in the corner of your room. So the question for you is, can you find the beauty in everything? So one final tip I will send you off before I send you into this tune-up is take the word gratitude in whatever your mother language is and paste that into the back of your head and just keep that in mind as you're wandering and beam gratitude onto everything that you see, okay? So see and sense the beauty and pay attention to that gratitude. Three minutes, happy wandering.
Okay, Wanderers, take one more minute. Find that beauty in everything. Find the beauty in unexpected places. Surprise yourself in the process. Call you back in a minute. Okay, Wanderers, great work. So fun to see everything that you noticed. If you want to share something in the chat, do let us know. Um, I don't remember who everything saw. I think Jorgen, maybe it was a reflection. There's some tire tracks. I saw a manhole from Lucky Town, I think. Eguin had shared a leaf or something, but, but seeing lots of beauty. So if you want to share, um, Nikki saw a mushroom, it sounds like. So come back to our present. I'm about to send you off on your quest, but first you need to know what a quest is before you can go on a quest. Um, so hopefully you've, you know, feeling stable. You've taken a moment to look at the world around you and everything feels a little bit more three-dimensional and you're picking up and noticing more data and more things around you. Um, so now your brain is very much primed for our quest. So I know a few people might have joined a little bit late, so don't worry, you can still join the quest. But what we have done so far in our tune up is to notice what we are attracted to and what we're drawn to and what we notice. We've seen what happens in the second tune up when we slow down and change our physical moment movements and how we look at things and take in information. And then we just celebrated finding the beauty in everything. So we are going to take all of that into our quest, which if you notice the word quest is in the word question. So a quest is a perfect time to take a question into the world around you. You're gonna be walking into the world with a question, like bringing a little bit of intentionality to the 15 minutes I'm going to send you off into the world. Um, and so I know for some people this might feel daunting, but deep breath. No need to stress because sometimes you might have a question right away. Sometimes your question might come through you, half, half, come to you halfway through. And sometimes the question you really want may pop up at the very end. So there is no one way to do this or experience a quest. Um, a really good one, if you're feeling stuck, and I'll share a few more in a minute, is to say streets, show me things I don't already know. So, you know, really let, you know, we're trying to get out of our intellectual, logical, rational brains and kind of let our feet guide us and see what happens. So not overthinking anything, we're going to be observing things. So your question probably shouldn't be something like, what's the meaning of life? It's a little bit daunting for 15 minutes, but you know, you do you. Um, a question like what's for breakfast might, you know, be a little bit too small. So we want something in between. So a few more ideas are what is next for me? Or show me new ways I can do blank. Or how can Anne get better at something? So you don't need to fix me. <laughs> you can use your name and fill in the blank. Um, you could say, how can I make today more unusually something? 
you might find you're at a cross crossroads or not sure whether to go down this path or that one. So, you know, a lot of people are in transition, figuring out what's next. You can take that as a question. And maybe you just want to ask, what do I need fresh answers to? So we want to, again, let our feet do the walking and let them take us um, and be wiser than our head because we are all tuned up. We have primed ourselves. Our body is raring to go. You're lucky to be able to have two feet that will walk you. Um, be grateful for that and let them take you to your treasure. So let your body be in charge with your question as a filter, which you can experience everything. Your question may come and go as you walk through um, this quest. So, you know, follow things um, and just see what happens because you're going to be gathering signals around you. You might see a sign, a word on a bus, a book title that's relevant to your question. It might be a smell or a color that reminds you of something, or you might hear overhear something on the street, um, or you can even ask your question um, if it's relevant to your quest. So um, that was very powerful to me once to have the permission to ask a question. Um, so don't force anything. If nothing obvious is happening, just notice that. And maybe that's a good indicator that you might want to slow down because, you know, we want wisdom to scream and shout at us, but we need to remember that oftentimes it's more of a whisper. So I'm almost done with my part. I see many of you already wandering and just saw some glasses popping out on Paco in Madrid. So um, I think that is a sign to have you go on your wander. It's gonna be 15 minutes and I want you to bring back at least one thing. So this could be something physical and tangible or just a memory of something meaningful that you witnessed, observed, saw, noticed. Um, you might wanna take pictures or um, write some notes in your phone, but don't get stuck on that keep going, keep wandering, because use every second until the end. You never know um, what might happen. I want you to see where your imagination takes you. Enjoy the freedom you're giving yourself to wander, to notice, play, you know, let yourself be a kid again. Um, and Keep in mind, you do not need to leave your room, your house to do this um, wherever you are. But the goal is to let the world around you stimulate your senses. So we can be curious about experiences indoors, outdoors, sat down, noticing. But you have a new lens to see everything in the world around you. So the next time you hear my voice, I'll be giving you a reminder a couple minutes to go that it's coming to the end. And then we will hit part three, which sharing. So it's always amazing what you all bring back, but I'm going to be quiet now and send you off on your quest with your, with your question, observing the world. And if you can try to bring something back to share.
Llamando, llamando. Okay, wanderers, you have three more minutes left on your quest to keep wandering. If you've forgotten about your question, it might be a good time to think about it again, or maybe your question has changed, but keep sensing. And I want you to keep in mind that sometimes the best signals or clues or messages or observations don't happen until the last moments of the quest. So do not give up. Do not give, oh, for, you know, don't lose hope. Um, hopefully you're starting to find some answers, but you've got a little bit less than three minutes to keep following those feet. Don't worry about interpreting anything. Just keep paying attention to what you are noticing in the world around you. And I'll call you back in a few minutes um, so we can share and see what you discover.
Okay, Worldwide Wanderers, amazing work. I see that you all have done some incredible explorations and Stefania is now in Romania inside a beautiful cathedral church to wrap us up. That is where her feet took us, took her. Um, but I wanted to remind you that, you know, even though our official quest might be over, um, this is just a pause on our wander. It's a lifelong creative practice that you have all the tools to do. So we are officially moving into part three, which is sharing. And we'd love for you to consider what popped out at you. Um, so what did you notice um, and how it might be an answer to your question? So we'd love if you could share in the chat what popped out at you. What did you notice? And keep in mind that something might have popped out at you that puzzles you or you might not know how it relates to your question. That's okay too, um, because we want to remind you that sometimes your body has a suspicion and, and it's useful to keep in mind that sometimes the body knows things that our mind doesn't know yet. But I am so curious, you know, I've been in my Paris apartment this whole time watching you wander and seeing where you're going. Um, but in the chat, let us know what you discovered, what did you notice, what popped out. Um, and I know it can be a little bit challenging from mobile sometimes, so we'd also love to have a few people come off mute. But I am curious. Don't be shy and don't, don't edit yourself, because sometimes we edit ourselves and be like, oh, that's not interesting. That's really boring. We want the boring, the mundane, the exciting, the unexpected, the surprising. So some of you might still be deep in your wanders, but let us know in the chat. Come on, short and sweet, too. <laughs> You've got this. I know there's collective energy in this room. I think everybody is deep in there thinking. And, and I just want to let you and everyone know that uh, you can unmute yourselves and speak up if you like. So just go ahead and click unmute and share if you'd like to. Stefania, I, I know you already introduced yourself with your creative morning contact, but I'm just curious if you could share. Uh, just the sounds of the city. The sounds of the city, and I'm happy. I don't know if you can hear or what you can hear. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. We got your saxophonist. Do you think the sounds help answer your question at all? Uh, it made the answer harder. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. It, it made me fall in love again with this city. I, I forgot how it is to just wander and just look at the details and just listen to the sounds around you and the beauty. It's a really great experiment and thank you for challenging us to do this. <laughs> I love that. I keep saying this when facilitating these sessions, but just got goosebumps for you. And, you know, I know what it's like to think about a new place and change. But, you know, I love from, you know, design background, thinking about the beginner's mind and the beginner's mindset. But here you're like really coming back to what you really love and appreciate about the city. So super beautiful and so fun for us to see. You know, I've never been to Roma Romania, so now I want to go <laughs> to see that. <laughs> That. You're always uh, welcome. <laughs> uh, wonderful. I know that's, I need to find a creative mornings and go. Um, let me see if anybody else wants to come off. I'm going to read some from the chat. Natasha had said she noticed um, fluids move in a puddle far long after the ripples moved. So something's happening under the surface. As I'm writing this, I think I should have faith and move on. Whew, that is juicy. <laughs> Natasha, do you want to share anything else on a mute? No pressure, but. Okay. Um, Katharina, did I see you waving? Did you have Can something you, you want to share? Me? Yes. Katharina? 
Oh, you can't? Hang on. No, you can't hear me. I'm yes, so we can. No, we can. Oh, you can. We're good. Yes. Oh, okay. What did, what did you notice? What popped out? And um, where are you? You know, I'm in Switzerland. And um, I went with a question about how can I create this visibility thing in my business in a new way? And I'm walking across the field and obviously yesterday, all the corn has been harvested, or most of it, and the fields were like completely empty. And I was like, yeah, sometimes you need to take out all the old stuff. Like you need to have a clean, a clean slate, you know? You can't plant stuff in a field that is already crowded. It doesn't make sense, you know? Mm. And uh, and it, it feels really good. I feel like in, in my body, it's like, yes. Uh, like have, have this clean slate in my mind and be, and be open to complete new uh, possibilities. Wow. But I love that also what you just said about you feel it in your body. And so that's what street yeah. wisdom really wants to help connect us to. Because, you know, when a problem we go in our head and it spins and spins and spins. But what a beautiful analogy, you know. Wonderful. We're so excited for you. <laughs> now you get that visibility. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Um, I'm going to read some more from the chat. But again, if you know, this is a welcoming, warm community. If anybody feels pulled to share, go ahead and come off mute. I can't always see all the faces at once. Breakfast in Birmingham had said, open a gate. And no, sorry, an open gate. I thought the heavy um, gate to the local park was locked. I was pushing at it only to realize that it was open. It made me think the answer I have is already available and unlocked. Don't need to push so hard. Woo. love all this breakfast in Birmingham do you any do you have any interest in coming off on mute share anything else about that but I love the whole idea of street wisdom as something that unlocks um, you know I think we're all unlocking what's within us okay I'm gonna keep reading again Feel free to come off. Um, <laughs> Natasha also saw a labrador doodle checking out, checking out on me. Um, uh, can't see. Zoom is hiding the name, but the skies in Cluj and Madrid were exceptional. So enjoyed seeing them. Yeah, it's really fun seeing the different um, parallels. I think Paco was walking. I saw like you know glass, like I don't know, looked like floral awning and it was you know really wonderful but seeing how Romania and Spain can have similarities and the beauty around that Priya said my question was with my vacation winding down how do I carry this peace and slowing down back with me as I return to my everyday life um and she later said as I walked the intentionality is a key part of the answer Priya any interest in sharing anything else come off mute no pressure i think you said you were uh, hold on let me yeah. flip this around Hi. um yeah so it's been a weird vacation uh my family had a medical emergency while i was here so there was a lot of like intentionality to enjoy myself while things were happening back in the states and so i just um i think while i was walking i was thinking about that because it's gonna be crazy when i get back so just making sure to Keep calm and carry on, I guess. <laughs> and is there anything that you saw in particular that, you know, jumped out at you, popped out at you? No, this town is just so lovely. Um, where I'm where, staying, where are you know, right now on vacation? Um, it's Stuttgart. So um, I'm in one of the, um, I guess it's called Moringen. Um, and it's, it's just nice. You're just walking around and seeing um, people going about on their daily jobs and things like that. And so it was just, it was just peaceful. But again, just seeing everyday life, and especially because you are having this wander and this experience and walk shop, you know, in a different place, it can feel different. So I love that your question is like, you know, like, how can you bottle that up and take it back with you? Um, so wonderful. Um, thank you. Jackie in Yorkshire, Yorkshire, 
I'm probably not, my British English is not brilliant. Um, so she said to expand so much for free. Am I being brave enough? Jackie, any interest in sharing any more? On that. But I love this idea of expansion. And is there anything in particular that you saw? Hi there. Still... Hello, good morning. Hi, hi there. Yes. Um, yes, it's a very early morning. Um, yes, it made me think, um, am I being brave enough? Um, I think we can stay in our room too long and try to solve our problems from within the four walls of a room and coming out. And it reminded me of the things that I really love to do and how I could perhaps, I must keep reminding myself to keep pushing just nudging and expanding my life a bit more it's very easy for it to um contract without you really realizing it yeah um i'm curious so, that yeah. that question is that the question you started with or is that the question that kind of came to you during the quest am i brave um, enough? being brave enough yeah it was around my business and i think i'm being constrained by certain uh, factors and certain resources and the parts go well maybe I should be taking greater risk um, and um, and not looking at things you know when you walk on a path you never tend to you always want to go on the path uh, dead ahead and it's important to explore to left and right because at one point in this walk um, I came off the tarmac the bitumen and walked on the track and that was where I could go slower so um yeah when you're on the bitumen you feel you've got to go as fast as everybody else but when you're on the mud track you can go as slow as you like uh, oh, I love so, so yeah I it, made me, it made me think differently mm. no that's wonderful and everything you just said a lot of do something called mapping your path but it's it's just all your language is even speaking to me so i just want to remind everybody that everybody's sharing in this room today even if you don't have perfect clarity, even, you know, the sharing it and speaking it out loud, and I'm sure it's resonating with others as well. So super powerful. And I love that even the, you know, the different paths you are on and the different speeds. So very, very um, interesting. Well, thank, thank you. you for sharing, Jackie. Appreciate that. Pleasure. Um, yeah, Nikki's also loving all these shares. Um, Olivia said, I saw train tracks, not knowing when the train will pass and the barriers keeping me from moving on. My question was, how can I be more patient with myself, my future? Olivia, anything you want to share around that? If you want to come off mute, no pressure. But again, we got this theme of paths and tracks and yeah. Hello. I'm trying to figure this out here on my phone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi. Yeah. And where are um, you today? <laughs> I'm I'm in Zurich, Switzerland, but I'm back home now. Yeah. Because I have a work call in ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick. And <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. As I said, my question was about patience and with my future. And I just finished my master's, and I'm going into journalism and. Um, just over the summer looking for jobs, it was hard for me to just trust the process, but I did get the internship that I really wanted, and everything is lined up for the next two years, which is amazing, but even with that, I, I noticed this feeling or this need of just speeding up and wanting to get done to really start my career, but yeah, it really helped today again to think about it and just tell myself to slow down and to enjoy the process and really live in this moment. And yeah, so thank you for the prompt. I love that. Um, my dad happens to be visiting Paris right now and he's trains are his life work and everything. So <laughs> part of me wants you just like go do street wisdom, you know, you after your call come up for another session, but just like explore yeah. that idea, but the, the slowing down because it's speed, yeah. but timing and, you know, you can't have two trains coming at once. So very interesting. Yeah, and also about, about the train track, whenever I 
go on this specific walk, I tend to hurry up knowing that the train might come. And today I really try to keep my pace low. And even if the train would come, just wait. And, you know, it would have taken me another one or two minutes, which is not a lot. Yeah, no, good reminders. And yeah, again, street wisdom has such a practice. So you all use these tools, <laughs> remind yourself. So, and yeah, we we have a few more sessions left if anybody wants to jump on still. Anne, I just want, if I may, hi, it's David. I just wanted to um, share with Olivia, actually, when I did my little walk, I, I found this um, written on the street slow. And of course, I've seen that before. And of course, we understand that. But in a similar way with Olivia, I was thinking, there's time. There's time. And I wonder how often that sense of hurry has got to do with a sense of there's not enough time, there's not enough time. Mortality. <laughs> it's the autumn. And I also, I was struck by what Olivia said about patience. And the, the, you know, I love to think about the roots of words and patience, the root of patience, as you know, is, is patience, which means to suffer. And in other words, to sit with discomfort. And, and I think that's interesting as well in the sense that we, we tend to think that if we're slow, everything's serene. Maybe not. Maybe what we're doing is we're, we're, we're living with the, that, that, that discomfort, noticing it, but allowing it to be there. And the third thing that you said, Olivia, is a very rich for me, was um, this word career. I'm waiting for my career to begin, like the train to arrive at the station. And this came up in previous, some of the previous walks, but I think a lot of us were taught at school that you're, and I'm not saying you were, but, but this somehow career is a, is a train track. It's a straight line. It kind of, you start here and you get going, and you accelerate and you get to the point. And, and actually for many of us, I think what you know, we're discovering is the career is much more wayward. It's much more wobbly. Um, I would say your career has long begun, you know, uh, you're on it, yeah? But the word career, when you look it up in the dictionary, look at the verb up, it means, at least in English, to, 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 to career is to crash down a mountainside in an uncontrolled manner, that kind of beginner skier on a black run thing. And I, I wonder if that's helpful for you to just think that the we're mostly off course most of the time. And somehow to enjoy that crazy ride yeah thank you so much and i love um that you talk about the etymology of these words um i studied linguistics so this is just my, down my path <laughs> wonderful the power of sharing everybody and finding the synchronicities and dot connecting and i know that there's quiet connections happening as well um, we've got about five minutes left. We've got a few people still wandering. Anybody feeling pulled? Tracy, I feel pulled to say I love your sweater and I'm really <laughs> curious if you uncovered anything, but no pressure. We'll be hearing from Tracy. Tracy's joining us on the next walk. She's just, ah, uh, okay. she's, uh, she's our street friend. Hi, everybody. Do you hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, how exciting. <laughs> Hi. Where are you joining it's, us from? I'm joining you from Lucky Town. Well, it's Germany and it, it actually is called Glückstadt, but Glück means luck. So I wrote Lucky Town, as we do call our town here itself sometimes. And it's so funny to be really from the countryside in such a big part here. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to share that my walk was really interesting because I slowed down really and I walked backwards. That's even more difficult to walk the normal way. And um, the part concerning the question was very funny because I, I walked through an area where I live. So I walked there every day and I found a walnut and I saw many places where things from beneath came up like the street that was broken and the older street from beneath came up and so this walnut is really a symbol for what I experienced that behind everything is something else and that was something like the question that's interesting for me what is behind it and what can I do to figure out 
how to reveal the better part that's behind it. So how can I make myself better? How can I make the environment better? How can I proceed getting it out? So that's that's actually everything I wanted to share. And I took this world at home for reminding me of this every day. <laughs> I love that this souvenir, you have it, and that we are ending with Lucky Town. It's again, it's so meaty and symbolic, but we've got two minutes before we get to our next worldwide wander. Um, just want to say how, you know, David Pearl, we've got the founder of Street Wisdom here today, but just how much that the beauty that we're seeing in the world is really the beauty we're seeing in ourselves. And, you know, what we're seeing is actually our future selves. Um, so I want to make sure we got enough time for Kyle um, to wrap up um, or David, but we've got it's, it's a big wild world and we got to keep moving, but thank you all. <laughs> thank you, Anne. I, I have to say, uh, it is a real joy, a deep joy, when somebody that we've met along the way takes on street wisdom and then can lead it the way you have, uh, the way Philip has, the way others have, so that, so that I, as I guess as the founder, can be a beginner again. So I really felt uh, in really, really safe hands. Thank you for that. Thank you so much for that. My pleasure. Such a treat. Love being here. So, Kyle. Yes. Um, can I throw out a request for everyone to share some of their stories with us, uh, David? So I just put a link in the chat. Uh, worldwidewander.com share your story uh, you'll see a link in the menu we'd love to hear what you discovered and what you found on your walks today and of course you can find both of our organizations street wisdom and creative warnings partnering together forever um, we're just not going to stop at 24 hours we're just going to continue until <laughs> there's just a bunch of skeletons in the little zoom windows <laughs> <laughs>